Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Saturday, July the 18th, and it's 3.20 p.m. And I want to say I've got some smart cookies, and I knew some of you would figure it out. Yes, the mask is not antiviral. I even went to Google and looked it up just so I could have an answer. And I asked, how small are viruses compared to bacteria? Viruses are infectious particles about 100 times smaller than bacteria and can only be observed by electron microscopy. Now, it takes a, a pretty good professional, like we used in microbiology class, to see a bacteria. Or just imagine dividing that tiny little thing into a hundred little pieces. You could probably pit, put a bacteria on the end of the head of a pin, maybe. Maybe. So, the thing with the masks, and one of you uh, reported it, you said here, um, or maybe a couple of you, um, Stacy Joe, um, yeah, Fauci died in March saying they don't work. No, he was telling the truth. The masks don't work. But he didn't want people rushing out and getting them yet because, yes, they wanted them for the medical staff. But these things they're passing out and using here, there's cloth. They're just cotton material. They're not real masks. They're masks people are making in their homes. And I made one. My sister sent me a couple now. I got another one yesterday. And I've got it in the wash. I want to try to do what well, cuz something I saw yesterday or the day before, day before said that unless you're in a sterile environment, even the ones you put on to wear in surgery are not will not hold back bacteria after 20 minutes. I don't understand that. You haven't ripped it or anything, but um, maybe it's because your breath is... I don't know. There, I don't remember there being an explanation. It just said that masks are no longer effective after 20 minutes. I should have saved that. I'm sorry I didn't. Some people might want to know that. Maybe I can find it in a video. I did watch some videos. Um... And I was on, what do you call that, Google Hangouts with uh, that channel I watch on Bridie on. That's really cool. I should try to get that going with ours. But, I, you know, I can hardly do what I'm doing now. And I can't do that with them every night. Even though it's nice to fellowship and live, you know. It, you can... Like, say, hey, I got a question, and she'll stop the video, and then I can ask the question, and then she'll explain it, or somebody else will chime in and say their part, and there's only like six people that participate, but still, it's fellowship, and it's really neat. If any of you um, want to try Google Hangouts, you can exchange numbers People, you see it on here a lot. See, that's just it. You have to, you don't want to give your number out to just anybody. I would like to think you wouldn't. Um, not these days. I would like to think everybody on my channel, you could. But it's something to think, of, think about and look into. Every time I get on, they've got to help me get on. So I don't know that I could handle doing it. You know, leaving it and telling you how to do it. Not yet, anyway. Okay, so Stacy Joe said you didn't say antiviral. Um, oh, let me, let me put this prayer request out. 
I think, if I'm not mistaken, this might be Brother Max. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Fire Faith Ministries. Uh, this person says, Red Alert, please read Sister Jeannie Hardesty. At the beginning of this year, the Lord gave me a dream vision, a dream vision, a fra fragments of asteroids coming down, hitting Chico, California. See, he, Max lives in Chico, California, and destroying it. I received a second confirmation from Israeli News Live that is September we're supposed to go through an asteroid belt that's going to pelt America like it's never been pelted before. Then I received the third confirmation from my son telling me that God showed him that an asteroid five miles wide would impact Chico, California. Most of the asteroid would break up first before hitting Chico, California. Please take us in prayer to the Lord, to the Lord God. Bless you, my sister. Okay, I told him, I think God is telling you to move. See, yeah, he had said earlier in the year that he, that God was telling him to move, and he's apparently still there. Maybe he was doing a fundraiser, I believe. Perhaps he didn't get up any money or enough. But anyway, I said, I think God is telling you to move. Sometimes you just have to step out in faith and just go for it, you know, even with 50 bucks in your pocket. This is supposed to be coming, I told him, because look, look at all the, we had Pastor Dana um, talking about September, October, November. We were talking about that last night in the um, Google Hangouts, the, all the confirmations to the destruction coming. So it's not just Chico, it's a lot of places. Which is why you would want to pray where to go. If you feel led to move, where would you go? Well, Steve Denoon and his wife are moving out of Florida because, because of the water on either side. If, if an asteroid hits the Atlantic Ocean... More likely than not, Florida's going underwater. The whole East Coast is probably going underwater. I just can't help but think the first rounders, the first fruits rapture is going to happen first. Because if a bunch of us died, then we wouldn't have our body to receive a glorified body in to come back down to help. The people that are still alive. You see what I'm saying? The Lord's not going to let that happen to his bride. I just know it. I'm telling you that. What I think out of, from the bottom of my heart. Anyway. Um. Chad chimed in with nanotechnology is in the vaccine. Right, it is, but it is not the mark of the beast. It's, it's probably going to be something you don't want and would be better off not getting. But the Bible is clear. It will be something they have to put in your right hand or in or on your forehead. We know that. Okay, um, yep, 
Yeah, okay, good girl, Tessa. She said I didn't hear antiviral. That's right. That is the answer. Um, Roxanne, she said antiviral, antibio, antichrist. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of antis going around. Um, yeah, and Aubrey, you're right. I know for a fact that not all these corona cases are real. No, they're not. I saw a video, and it was like a, like a, um, one of the professionals in all of this talking, uh, or maybe not, not like in with Fauci, but that has, oh man, I should, maybe I've got that video or I could link it, but anyway, they were standing in front of a group explaining standing by a blackboard kind of thing or you know yeah blackboard saying uh, if you test positive they automatically add 15 because they know you've come in contact with approximately 15 people in the last two to three weeks or how, however many weeks it is some will actually ask okay tell me who you all have come in contact with and it might be 10 people it might be 20 people see so they're taking an average and some places are just putting plus 15 so that's 16 new cases right there or maybe if they're doing it the other way it might be 1 plus 20 cases or 1 plus 10 however they're doing it each state might be doing it differently one of the two ways and they're adding all those up. Now listen to what Aubrey said if you hadn't read. She has four replies. She said, I know for a fact not all those corona cases are real. Reason why is because when I was on the ambulance with my daughter, the paramedic told me he had to report her as a corona case because I was, it was, his orders to even though nothing was confirmed and his temperature gun was even broken. It was 104.6 temp upon leaving the house and 97.6 from him. That's how it was here for a while till they got a new gun. And over 102 at the hospital after the Tylenol. Poor guy admitted he had broken equipment and the departments can't do anything about it because the supply just isn't there. My daughter did not have that. And if she did, she overcame because it was an attack from the devil and we, the body, through the name of Jesus, stopped it. I know for a fact Jesus protected and healed my daughter. Well, they did say it came back a UTI and in a child, especially if it had been going on for a while, uh, can definitely be a temp that high. But, you know, it could have been more than one thing because you said she had a cough. And I don't remember hearing that UTIs caused a cough. Okay. So, um, I'm trying to see who else got it. Transformation of the Bride said, not antiviral. And Jubilina chimed in. I'm so glad to hear from her. Always worried about you, girl. <laughs> Praying for you all the time. Let's all keep Lena in our prayers, okay, everybody? All right. Well, I just wanted to give the answer for those of you wait not waiting to hear. And um, perhaps I'll have some more videos out for you soon. Um, I may go through my list of history. I've watched some good ones, 
but I was just like, well, I don't know, maybe not that one. I'll, I'll just, it'll go to history. I know it's going to go to history and think about it. You know, I kind of do that with some of these. I let them go to history, watch some more, because I try to stay caught up with the emails, you know, because I get so many. So anyway, I don't want to make excuses. I'm just telling you, I'm trying the best I can, all right? And I'll, I'll be back with some more videos before the weekend is out, I hope. Um, I do want to plead the blood of Jesus over everybody. Over, plead the blood of Jesus over this video as we ask for prayer for Max and anybody else that needs to hear from the Lord about moving. And if you need to move, where? I pray the Lord will show you where to go. If you have to sleep in your car, sell what you can right quick. Get a tent, some sleeping bags, whatever you need to survive. Throw a couple pots and pans and whatever you can cook um, out in no man's land. I mean, seriously, you want to be mobile, I would think. But I would pray that you're counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass. The Lord did say, now this is something I need to tell you. I was reading in my, my journal over here some old messages. And only God could help me open up to where I was. But it was right near the middle. Oh, this is it. Okay. It starts off. It's tw October 1st, 2013. Message from Jesus. It says late. Well, it was early Tuesday, October 1st. Okay. I had put September 30th. Message from Jesus. My people, there is a verse of scripture in the Gospel of Luke. Pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. Notice that it says all these things. However, not all will escape because many of you are not ready. You have not repented. You have not believed that it was necessary to repent again. Therefore, you will be left to endure more hardships. Oh, that I wish. Oh, how I wish that I could gather all of you unto myself and bring you to your new home. But only my spotless, clean, and purified bride will be found worthy to escape all these things. This will make many of you angry. But I tell you the truth. I have warned you. I tried to tell you to repent and turn away from your sins, but you thought you were doing okay, that you were not guilty and had no need of repentance. I beg of you to not take the mark of the beast. If you accept this chip, you will be marked. It will change your DNA. It will be an unforgivable sin. You cannot go back. This is why I said to you in the Holy Scriptures to pray that you may, that you might escape this hour of temptation. Oh, that's in the Lord's Prayer. Lead me not into temptation. I believe that's what he's talking about. And then in Revelation 3, 10 and 11, it talks about the Church of Philadelphia will escape the hour of temptation. Okay, that wicked one will know that you are hungry and tired and thirsty. With this chip, you can have all your needs met, they will tell you. It will be extremely hard for you to resist. That is why I have been telling you to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you are left behind due to refusal to repent, yet... 
you had been filled with the Holy Spirit, which I don't see how that's possible, but I suppose it is. I will have to direct you where to go and what to do. How will you hear my voice if you are not adequately prepared? Repent. Be ready. Clean your wedding garments so that you will not have to endure any of this. I am speaking of the great tribulation. Okay, he, listen. He, as if, as it is not appointed unto my bride to suffer the wrath of my father, he will not let Satan have his way with anyone who is not found worthy to escape all these things. Why do you wait? Why do you not believe that the time is short? You must repent, be ready, and you must help others by telling them what I have told you so that they need to repent and be ready also. I love you, all my children. I have room enough for you all. I want to bring you all up out of the filth of this evil world, and it will only get worse. What a place I have prepared for you. You cannot imagine how wonderful it is here in my presence. But you must be ready. You must be clean, spotless, without wrinkle or blemish. I have spoken. Now it is up to you. You have been warned. Thus saith the Lord Jesus Christ. But then I have under that second part. I must tell you again. Do not take the mark of the beast. This will be designed to meet all your needs. Chaos is about to come to your world. You will not know how to survive if you are not prepared and you get left behind. Okay, this is really long and I hate just rushing through it. But All right, you may be killed for my name's sake if you do not take the mark of the beast who is the Antichrist. Don't let him have you. You belong to me. I want you with me. Can't you understand? Please repent, 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 and be ready. I see, there's so many who aren't. That's why he's making a point of it, I'm sure. I love you, and you are mine. Do you want me? Do you want eternity with me? I need to know that you are sincere. You cannot just say it with your mouth and not mean it in your heart. I know your thoughts, your every deed. I know everything about you. I will know if you are sincere or not. Please be ready. Please be ready. I am ready for you, and I am ready to pour out my wrath on the evil ones who will soon be unleashed and allowed some time to devastate your planet. You would not believe me if I told of all the things they have in mind. about well I can't I can't make out that word but if you are left behind keep in mind if you repent and ask me to fill you with my Holy Spirit you can have power over them to a point they will be allowed some time to accomplish my plans you see just because you're filled with the Holy Spirit is no guarantee you're going to be taken. I've tried to tell people that before. It will certainly help. It puts you in the category of the wise virgins. But if you're not forgiving somebody or repenting of sins, living a lifestyle that is not holy, you see, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, and still be guilty of other things. Okay. Their evil will backfire on them. 
Then Father will pour out his wrath and they will be destroyed. During this time, many of you will join me. And when I come to earth to finish off the evil ones, that's when he comes to set his foot down on earth for the battle of Armageddon, the saints following with him on white horses. I will gather everyone who turns to me who has not accepted the beast and who is still alive. Many will join me through death, but this is far better than taking the mark. The mark of the beast will send you to hell, where there will be terror unspeakable. I, the Lord, have spoken. You will know this is the truth as it begins to come to pass. Everything in my holy scriptures will come to pass and more. Knowledge is being poured out that my word does not contain. This is because men's hearts were not ready to accept it. You must hear it now. I want everyone to know there is a place called hell where there will be far more than weeping and gnashing of teeth. Please do not choose to go there. Let me prepare a place for you. I have mercy in abundance for those who repent and get right before it's too late. If you do not and you take the mark of the beast, it will change you and I will no longer want you. Test these words against the scripture and see if they do not meet your scrutiny. They are my word, and I have spoken to you once again. I am the Lord your God. You cannot put anything or anyone else before me. Maranatha. Okay, uh, that's not the one I thought was the one that he talked about. Stars falling. And then we would go up, but more stars would fall. So, do you think maybe he's talking about these asteroid pieces or the literal? I could do another video on that one. I'm pretty sure it's the next one. I was reading through it looking for that one. And I just opened up to that one because it's near the middle. So, anyway, I'm going to end this one here. And... I pray that anybody who needs to repent or do anything that would make you considered uh, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, that you will do that and be ready. But yes, we might see some asteroid fragments falling first. Whatever you do, you just trust in the Lord with all your heart. And have complete faith and trust in him. Okay? Now I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection. And over myself and my computer. And over each and every one of you and your devices. And um, all of your internet connections as well. And with that I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.